Uh, my name is Chuck Cullum. I am the executive director of the Upper Colorado River Commission. And uh, as Steve pointed out, I spent a good deal of time in Arizona representing the Central Arizona uh, project and wrestling on Colorado River issues. Before I dive into my talk this morning, I, I would like to understand where you all are from. And I'll just go quickly. Any Californians here? Hey, Bart. Good to see you. Um, any other Californians here other than our panelists? Good for you. Way to go. Um, any Arizonans here? Oh, nice. Welcome. It's a little cooler. Nevadans? Well, this is an open lane. I'm just going to go with that. So my intent today, if I can make this thing work, is to really talk about the theme of common ground and in the face of the sort of the cycle of emergency action on the Colorado River, I'd like to take part of the time today to ce celebrate some successes that have occurred both from the four upper division states of Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, and Wyoming, but from the basin states perspective. Um, for those who were born in the previous century, this is a Gary Larson cartoon, and to the attorneys, it is a copyright infringement. Um, <laughs> I, I want to talk about what our challenge is. Um, our challenge is to adapt to aridity, drought, and external pressures, and we must adapt, or we will perish and perish in the sense of the structures, institutions, and the way we manage water in the Colorado River Basin will change to us rather than you all guiding your future. So I did hang out with folks who looked like that smoking cigarettes in high school, but I personally never inhaled, so let's go from there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm through with that. All right, so, you know, what is the Upper Colorado River Commission? It's, it's um, basically whatever the four states tell me it is. Um, and the four states are, as I said, Colorado, New Mexico, uh, Utah, and Wyoming. For those paying attention, that's clockwise uh, around the basin. Um, and we also have a federal chair, um, that's Ann Castle. The UCRC is a creation of the 1948 Upper Colorado River Compact. And to our colleagues from the lower basin, compacts like that are super helpful when you have a conflict um, on how to allocate uh, uh, water among, uh, let's say, three lower basin states. Just something you might take back, Bart. Um, I'll stop now. I'll stop with that. Because um, Bart really is a good guy, and he's worked really hard for California for many years to um, protect California's interests and also the interests of the river. Um, so the, the point of the UCRC is to facilitate coordination and collaboration among the four states as they approach Colorado River interstate management issues. It is focused explicitly on interstate issues. The intrastate um, uh, issues and tensions are managed by the four um, commissioners independently within their states. So, we, we stay on the river out of uh, the interstate business. So how is it structured? People sometimes talk about the UCRC as if it's a, a giant thing. Um, it's an army of three. Um, myself, the executive director, Sarah Larson, uh, who's the deputy director and chief engineer, and we have an attorney, Nathan Bracken. We serve the four upper division commissioners and the federal commissioner and they provide um, technical uh, policy and legal support from each of the states. So when I send an email out to the UCRC um, commissioners and staff, their key advisors, it's usually about uh, an email with about 25 people on it. So that's, that's who we are. We really do facilitate the, the the intent is for those four state leaders to find common ground and communicate that downstream and to the United States. So 
I want to thank whoever scheduled 25 atmospheric rivers this spring. Whoever you are, way to go. Um, it has been uh, one of the, uh, you know, as a hydrologist, um, it's been just an amazing year to be working on this river. Um, my wife sent me a picture this morning from our uh, house in Midway, Utah. Um, it's not in the watershed, but to quote uh, a former vice presidential candidate, I can see the watershed from my porch. Um, anyway, the, the punchline here is that it's been snowing continually uh, for March, and they, they got four inches last night. Um, as a, I'm, I'm paid to love this snow. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little tired. Um, but right now, um, the inflow forecast for um, the unregulated inflow to Lake Powell has moved from March 1st, 8 million acre feet, March 1st, April through July inflow. Uh, the current uh, forecast from the uh, River Forecast Center in Salt Lake is 11.1. .1. That's 3.1 million acre feet of increased projected runoff into Lake Powell um, because of the snow accumulation and the cool wet weather across the, the upper basin. It's a tremendous gift, and our challenge as water managers is to not squander it. The chart on the lower left is Lake Powell. From the March 1st study, remember that's March 1st, there's, so that, that graph lacks about three million acre feet of inflow. It shows in March, based on the March study, a modest recovery of storage in Lake Powell that modest increase is driven by A, technical term, crap ton of inflow, but B, we're not getting the full benefit of it be because of the way the 2007 guidelines work, which require balancing uh, releases downstream to Lake Mead. You can see Lake Mead in the graph to the lower right. Even with additional inflow, Lake Mead declines. That's driven largely by the amount of uses in the lower basin as of March 1st. The challenge that the basin states face is what will people do in response to this gift, this tremendous success, whoever made it happen, we're all grateful. Um, what are we gonna do with it? Are we gonna squander it? Are we gonna store it and rebuild resiliency in this potentially once in a decade, potentially really once in a century type of runoff? So, successes. We've had, the runoff is a tremendous success. I want to acknowledge some additional successes in the Basin States context. The Basin States have come together. I know, I know there's media in the room. Uh, so, hey, y'all. Um, it's not really helpful uh, without conflict, but the Basin States have and continue to talk to one another and try and reach consensus around critical elements. One of those critical elements is how should reclamation operate the system for the remainder of this water year. The water year uh, terminates the end of September. There is consensus, a consensus view from the seven states. That is a success. As you all recall, um, there isn't a consensus on near term and longer term um, operations of the system. Recently, there was a six state letter um, uh, leaving out um, the neighbor to the southwest, um, not Utah, California. Um, and that letter, so California and, Arizona, uh, California and the six states have differing opinions on how to address the risk that we face in this system. But we do agree on how the system should be operated through the rest of this water year. Another success, the uh, upper division states are working to, um, to meet the commitments they made um, over the summer in response to Commissioner Camille Tootin from Reclamation's call to generate two to four million acre feet. The, the strategic approach there was to remove the upper division from the negotiation space between Arizona and California. That is where the tension resides. That's where it lives. The upper division states have limited tools and limited contributions to make to that. 
The commissioners committed to do what they can with the tools they have, and they are carrying forward with those uh, commitments, including what you heard in the previous panel about aggressive water conservation, about uh, water management. Last year, the state of Wyoming put 30% of their Green River irrigation in uh, priority. That's something that doesn't happen in the lower basin because they rely on storage. In, the, in Wyoming, 30% of irrigated agriculture in the green was cut off in August and September because of low flow. We adapt to the water supply available. That's what the Mancos film was really focused on. Um, the upper commissioner, the upper division commissioners have been meeting regularly with tribal leaders, with Southern Ute, Ute Mountain Ute, uh, Navajo, Hickorya, and in some cases, the Utah Ute tribe. Um, that's been a very productive engagement where people are sharing ideas on how collaboratively uh, the four upper division states can, can convey all the voices in the system as part of the interstate conversation. Um, you heard from Helen about, on the previous panel, about uh, the bipartisan infrastructure law, um, also known as uh, IIJA, which is the uh, Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. Um, the UCRC is investing um, $50 million over the next three years, next four years, in new infrastructure to measure, monitor, and improve reporting on the water resources in the upper basin. That's a, uh, an improvement uh, that is a significant part of how we're gonna manage the upper basin in the future. The commissioners committed in December to continue discussions about demand management. We'll be hearing more about that in June as with the intrastate conversations uh, continue to be rolled forward. Um, and then we have the system conservation pilot program, which I want to thank um, the elected leaders um, in the Senate and House who pushed through the authorization to provide funding with the Inflation Reduction Act and authorization for the um, upper division states to utilize that money to conserve water to do their part on uh, contributing with the limited tools we have in the upper basin. Um, there's a, an open lane, uh, and I want to thank the Senate staff for all the outreach and communication from each of the eight senators' staff to the leaders in the upper basin. Then in the lower basin, we understand that Arizona and California have conversations. We don't know what they are. I hope there are numbers associated with them that begin with two million. And, um, that is the center of gravity on how this basin moves forward. Um, I think there's a lot, of, lot to celebrate on success for collaboration in the upper basin. Um, I want to highlight uh, the drought response operating agreement, which is whereby um, the four upper division states in reclamation have released water from Flaming Gorge and Blue Mesa. And um, that water is going to be recovered this year. The upper division states made a loan to Lake Powell, and Reclamation is committed to repaying that loan in this uh, wet cycle. That's a tremendous development, um, largely through the persistence of um, the upper division commissioners to push and push and push Reclamation to uh, repay the, the loan that was provided. There's a draft EIS that's going to be released in April. Um, that supplemental EIS informs and uh, potentially changes part of the 07 guidelines. Um, we don't know what it says, but it's an interim step, another Band-Aid in the Basin States discussion. I want to talk about the pivot to the long term. This is where the rubber is going to meet the road. What do we do with the 07 guidelines? They don't work. They don't work as demonstrated by the need for a drought response for a DCP, uh, uh, what the heck does DCP even stand for anymore? Drought contingency plan, plans plural. It was a Band-Aid. The supplemental EIS is an additional Band-Aid. We need to move forward. Uh, the existing rules don't work for the upper basin. They don't work for the system. 
we have depleted the storage in the reservoirs and your uh, state leaders are committed to developing new rules that, that protect the system, provide resiliency, adapt to changing circumstances, are implementable within the law of the river framework, create sustainability, particularly in the upper basin, and have, uh, are equitable. In this context, equitable means evaporation and losses are a fact of life. Everyone should pay their taxes, both to the atmosphere and to the system, and not uh, hope for a wet year. What does that look like? It looks like pain, particularly uh, significant reductions in the available supply to the lower basin and uh, some flexibility for continued uh, use and development in the upper basin. We have tribes with settled water rights who have, are being told that they don't have the ability or access to the water rights that they were promised by the U.S. Congress. We need to figure out how to resolve that and that, that happens through building flexibility in um, the upper basin water uses. And with that, thank you.